let's take a look at my fourth item. See if any of you can guess what it is while I get it unboxed here. This packaging is not impressive at all. Let's see if anything's broken. Looks like this came out. Most of you probably already know, but this is a PlayStation 4 Pro. Now the seller of this PlayStation 4 Pro said that this console was damaged by a lightning storm. So the first thing we're gonna do is start it up, plug it in and see if it works. Looks like this is having a little problem. We got a bent, a bent prong here. Let's see if we can bend it back and it'll still work. Almost, not quite. So that one's just gonna break off anyways. We may have to look and see if we can find another one of these, but it looks like it stays in there pretty securely as is. Let's get this plugged in, let's see if it starts up, and let's see if it shows a signal on the TV. And now we have the PS4 plugged in, let's see if it starts up. We've got a startup noise, a startup beep, so that's a good sign. And we've got a blue light right here, let's see if this light turns to white. And that is showing a white light. And after plugging the HDMI cable into our TV, there is absolutely no signal. So this tells me that there is definitely some sort of problem on the HDMI system. It's most like the HDMI IC encoder chip. So let's take it apart and let's look at that and also look at the port on the inside. The good news is that we do have a white light. So that tells me it powers up fully and works normally other than the no signal. Now I spent $207.80 on this console in all. These corners can be a real pain, but we got that one up okay. Let's have a look on the inside. Looks fairly clean, a little bit of dirt there, but not bad. We'll clean that out. And the top cover also looks a little dirty, but not too bad. Now we need to take all of these silver screws out here along the edge, and then these black screws and unhook all the antennas. So let's do that next. And here we have all the screws out. Let's get this plate off and then we can take the power supply off from the other side. Here we have our first look at the motherboard. Everything looks fine as I expect it would. So let's get the hard drive out. Then we'll flip it over and take the power supply out. Now I'll take this screw, this screw, and this screw out. Then we'll take this screw and this screw out. And then we just need to remove the metal plate. And there we go. Now we can grab the power supply on both sides and rock it back and forth until it slips out. There we go. You have to be very careful. We need to make sure not to pull this cable up from the motherboard. And then we also need to pull the connector off of the motherboard. We need to be very careful to pull on the connector that goes into the connector on the motherboard and not the connector itself on the motherboard. So we're gonna grab on each side, rock back and forth as we gently pull up. And there we go. Now that the power supply is out, we can flip it over. And we need to remove all of these screws on this metal plate. And with those screws out, we can then just lift up the metal plate. There we go. Now we have the X clamp that holds the APU onto the motherboard. So let's take out these four screws and then we'll be able to pull off the clamp and the spacer. And with that clamp off, the motherboard is now ready to be lifted and moved out of the chassis. And here we go. And this is likely the problem right here. So what likely happened is a power surge came through the HDMI port, through these filters, and caused the IC on the motherboard to blow out. Now let's take this up to our microscope and hot air station and get this replaced.
Okay, and there we go, we have that IC replaced. Now we need to get this motherboard back in and see if it works. We do need to replace this thermal paste, which I'll be doing next, and then we'll put the motherboard back in just enough to test it and we'll see what comes up on the screen. And there we go, we got this clean and this clean. Now we're gonna put the new paste on and try and test it. Now, if this was my console, I'd go ahead and put liquid metal on here. Those of you who haven't seen that video may wanna check that out. I'll put a link to it in the upper right of your screen so you can check that out if you like. But we're gonna go ahead and just put Arctic Silver 5, our normal thermal paste in, and this thermal paste right here on the edge right here, that doesn't matter, it's not gonna cause any problem at all. So rather than take a bunch of time to clean that off, we're just gonna leave that there. We'll put our Arctic Silver 5 here and then we'll put it back in. Don't need a lot of this. That's plenty. This amount is plenty, probably a little bit too much, but it's not a big deal because it will squish out and even if it contacts these, these chips on the side, that's not gonna cause any problem at all. That's normal. As you can see, the factory paste also did that. So there's no problem there. You just wanna make sure and not put too little. And now we just put this end in first, down here. Make sure the fan connector's out of the way. Make sure everything else is out of the way. There we go. So I'm gonna need to put this X clamp on. There we go. Now with the X clamp on, we just need to install the hard drive and the power supply on the other side. And here we have our clean top cover. So we're gonna put this on next. You do need to clean off the PlayStation symbol there. So there's that. Now the bottom cover. We just start at the front, slide it back, and then pop it down. Okay, we're good there. Now we need to put the three screws in the back and the hard drive cover on. Now the PS4 Pro is all back together. Let's hook it up and see if it works. All right, and here we are. We've replaced the HDMI encoder chip on this PS4 Pro. So now it's time to see if it works. Okay, okay, here we go. So this is great news. This means that the HDMI port is working. Now we do need to see why it can't start it. The hard drive in this, I don't even know for sure that it's a hard drive that came in it. I think it is, but I don't know for sure. We also may need to update it or something like that. So let's get into that and see what we can figure out. So it seems like the front USB ports might not be working as my controller doesn't connect to those. So we may need to check into that and see what's going on there. So I'm gonna connect this to the rear port and see if it will connect then. All right, let's see what it does. Okay, we definitely have no USB connection at all. So that's a bummer. We've got to figure out why the USB ports aren't working now. We do have a picture on the screen, which is great news. So we do have the HDMI system fixed, but now we have to figure out why the USB system is not working. Now, when I think about this, none of the USB ports are working at all. So the first thing that I'm gonna suspect is maybe the main USB chip on the motherboard or something that has to do with all of them. So that's the next thing we're gonna check. Now we gotta get it taken apart again, and let's see if we can figure that out. So here we have the motherboard a little closer up. This port, this port, and this USB port are all not functioning right now. So what we gotta do is figure out what one thing do these all have in common that could be causing the problem we're having. Now, if 
I trace these traces back, you can see these traces go back here all the way to about right here on the motherboard. Which means they go somewhere in this location right here. Now, if we trace these ones back, these ones go all the way along here, along here, all the way over to somewhere in this location. And that location turns up in here to this chip. And you can also see there's more lines that come from here over to this chip. So I'm hoping that all three are connected to this chip and maybe possibly this chip is what's false, faulty. So what I have to decide if is if I'm just gonna replace this chip or whether I'm gonna start testing all these components. Given the fact that I feel like the most likely thing to be wrong is this chip, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this and let's hope that fixes it. If not, we'll have to start looking at these components and then we'll also have to look around in here to see if there's any components here that are faulty. I'm hoping it's not this because this would possibly require a reball or if this chip was faulty, then this console is probably not gonna be fixable as this chip is tied to the APU, the main chip on the other side. So hopefully it's not this. I think it's probably not, but if it is, then we're gonna to have to just sell this back for salvage and hopefully get some of our money back. So let's replace that chip and cross our fingers that that gets these USB ports working. Okay, so this chip has now been replaced. So the question is, do you think it's fixed or do you think it's not fixed? Let's get it back together and check it out. Okay, so unfortunately no response at all from the controller, still just blinks white. So unfortunately we don't have it fixed. We gotta take the motherboard back out and see what else could be going on. I'm gonna start testing some of these components and these components over here and hopefully we can get it figured out. Okay, so I've had a look at this motherboard pretty closely. I've tested as much of it as I could, including all of these components. I actually replaced this chip and this chip just in case, but I tested all these. These are all working how they should. Same with the other port. So everything there looks fine. So unless there's some little component someplace on the board that basically leaves this chip right here. And as I explained earlier, the problem with this chip right here is it's tied to the APU. So I can't just go and buy another one of these. Unless I find something between now and when this video goes live, I may have to call this one not fixable. All is not quite lost as I can still list this for sale and hopefully get around what I paid for it. I paid $207 for it. So if I can get somewhere close to that, I won't lose quite as much, but unfortunately this one is not looking good. Now I'm gonna put this all back together and see if by chance something I did might have worked, but right now I am definitely not very hopeful. Now it's all back together. I'm pretty sure this one's a lost cause, but let's test it just to be sure. And here we have it all put back together. Let's see if we can get this thing powered on and see if maybe for some reason it'll work. Okay, I'm already seeing no power, that's no good. So the disk drive seems to have power. Normally if you put a disk in, it will power the console on. And there's just nothing there. Yeah, so unfortunately, 
This one has gotten worse the more I've worked on it, and unfortunately that's also the case sometimes. Sometimes it just doesn't go as you hope. This one came in with what I thought was an easy fix. I got the video going on it. Unfortunately, the USB ports I could just not get working, and some sort of the work I did on the rest of the console caused it to not even power on. I'm guessing the work I did on that large chip, the Southbridge, probably was the problem with that, or it could have also been some other problem on the board that I didn't notice. In any case, this one definitely is not gonna be a fix for me, so the best I can do is list it on eBay for parts to see if I can get most of my money back on it. So far in the contest, I've had three fixes and made some decent profit. On the first PS4 Slim, I made $119 in profit. On the second Nintendo Switch, I made about $36 in profit. And the Xbox One S is still for sale. This PS4 Pro I, pre I paid $207 for, so I need to get it listed on eBay so I can get it sold and hopefully still have enough money to buy something else that I can hopefully fix. Be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this sort of video, as I'll make plenty more in the future. And also watch for my video number five that will be coming out next Friday, and number five will be the last video in this series. I'll also link up my mate Vince's video so you can see who's ahead in the challenge and also see if he was able to fix his item number four. Thank you guys so much for watching and following along. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think might be wrong with this PS4 Pro, and if I still have it, I might be able to try your fix.